Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology and yet another gloomy autumn morning. Now I have been teaching for over 15 years and one of the most common frustrations I hear from students is you've done your test, you've done your exam, but you didn't get the grade that you were hoping for because of silly mistakes. And that's exactly what we're gonna be looking at today. These silly mistakes or basically common mistakes, misconceptions, specifically linked to respiration and photosynthesis. So if you're getting ready for any kind of test or exam, trust me, you're gonna to wanna to watch this because if you can learn these common mistakes so that you don't make them, that could be the difference between a grade. Just picking up those few extra marks on just these topics and there's gonna be lots more of these videos to come. So let's get into it, starting with abbreviations. Now this is a particular example for photosynthesis, but it does apply for the entire spec. AQA are really specific in saying that if you don't see a word abbreviated in the specification, then you will not get the mark in the exam. And the most common way that I see this coming up for photosynthesis is triose phosphate. And in fact, it does come up as well in respiration because triose phosphates in respiration as well. So if you were going to say, let's say the Calvin cycle, where you have two molecules of GP are reduced into two molecules of TP, if you said that, TP, you will not get the mark because you have to say reduced into two molecules of triose phosphate. Sticking with the Calvin cycle, another common mistake that I see where the mark scheme is so particular is talking about RUBP combining with carbon dioxide to make GP. You would not get the mark for that. And yes, you could also say using Rubisco enzyme, but that's not the reason you wouldn't get the mark. RUBP is a five carbon compound. Carbon dioxide is a one carbon compound. Add them together, that means you have six carbons. However, GP, which is made, is only a three carbon compound. And for this reason, AQA are so particular that you have to say RUBP plus carbon dioxide creates two molecules of GP because it's those two, three carbons together that add up to that six. So really make sure whatever you're talking about GP in the Calvin cycle, you always state two molecules of GP because that silly mistake could cost you so many marks on that question. The next common error that I see due to probably just not double checking your work is confusing the coenzymes in respiration and photosynthesis, NAD and NADP. NAD is the coenzyme in respiration. NADP is the coenzyme used in photosynthesis. If you get it the wrong way round, you will not get marked where you're using that term in your answer. So the simple way that I suggest to remember this is for NADP, which is in photosynthesis, think P for photosynthesis. Now that's not literally what the P stands for, but that's the best way I think to remember it. NADP photosynthesis. The next mistake I see is a common misconception. So it's not so much a silly mistake where you just made an error in the spur of the moment with nerves. It's actually just a misunderstanding. And that's in chemiosmosis, which appears in both photosynthesis in the light dependent reactions and in respiration in oxidative phosphorylation. And it's saying that it involves active transport of protons, which it does not. In chemiosmosis, you have electrons moving along the electron transport chain. They release energy as they go from protein to protein, and that energy is used to pump protons, or hydrogen ions, across the membrane. It is not active transport, because active transport requires ATP, a carrier protein, and no ATP is used in this process. It is just using the energy from those electrons. So you must say the protons are pumped. If you say it's active transport, that's an error, and you won't get marked. The next common mistake that I see is linked to glycolysis and respiration, and it's not using the term net gain of ATP. In glycolysis, two molecules of ATP are used at the start to phosphorylate glucose, and then when triose phosphate is oxidized into pyruvate, you get four ATP being produced at that stage. So that means you've used two, you made four, so overall you have two ATP available, and that is why you have to say there is a net gain of ATP. More specifically, there's a net gain of two ATP molecules. But quite often in the mark scheme, if you're asked about how much ATP is made or what are the products, if you don't specify net gain, they might not give you the mark. So don't make that error. So there we go. Those are some of the common either silly mistakes, 
little errors or misconceptions that I frequently see come up year and year where students lose marks which could have been the difference between a grade. So make a note of those, make sure you don't make those errors and hopefully that will help you boost your grade. Now if you did find that helpful knowing these exact mark scheme tips then I've got a whole set of mark scheme specific flashcards for AQA and OCRA so you can check those out linked below. But for now that's it and I'll see you next week.